It was a book from Indris Shah. What Shah? Huh? King. Means king. Uh, this is a story from, I think, from Iran. Huh? I like Sufi story very much because I have a lot of story. Yeah, not just talk, lecture, but story. You know, and you can tell children and women, everybody likes. Okay, huh? begin with. A story called The Saint and the Sinner. Hmm. A very nice story. I like it. It's a book called The Wisdom of the Idiot. <laughs> it's a very funny book. I guess they make fun of themselves too, the saint, yeah? Hmm. Call themselves idiot. Lao Tzu also say that, you know? He say that the wise one look like the idiot. There was a... One time, uh, a devish devotee who believed that it was his uh, job to uh, uh, correct those sinners, yeah, uh, the ones who do evil things in the world. He thinks he's very saintly. He's a devish. Devish is one of the Muslim tradition, eh? Huh? Mm. Yeah, devish. They, they dance a lot. They're happy people. At that time, you still have good master. Uh, maybe you still have now, yeah. It's hard to find enlightened master. Also, even hard to find enlightened devish. Ne? Now, this one is a devish, and he thought he's very enlightened, very saintly. So he took upon himself to go and reproach those who were doing no good, according to his standard. And he also wanted to preach to them spiritual ideas, reproach them for what they're doing wrong and tell them what they must do, they should do. Some busybody, you know. And you like my, my clothes? Yes. yes. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> Everything new now is like that, yeah? You can also do that, you paint it on, you know? Or you uh, stick on, you know. know. (laughs) So he believed that if he teach them the wrong thing that they're doing, tell them not to do it, and tell them the right thing, then they're going to find the truth and the right path. But in this book, the, the author wrote that this devish, however, did not know that a teacher is not only the one who tells others to do things by acting through fixed concepts, but the teacher must also know, you know, the innermost situation, the innermost situation of himself and of the person he wants to teach also. But this devish did not know because I mean, if you don't know it, then you might suffer a reverse uh, effect. Yeah. Instead of wanting to be good and positive, if he doesn't know the inner situation, maybe not inner connection with God, maybe, or not the inner connection of the person that he wants to reproach, then the effect will not be as he wants, but it may be opposite. Yeah, that's what the book wanted to tell us. But of course, he doesn't know all this. So, because of that, one day he has found himself a victim. Wow, he found a guy who is addicted to gambling. Put money and (laughs) want to gain a lot, but mostly lose a lot. (laughs) So this uh, so-called saintly devil, you know, took upon himself as a job to cure this man's habit. So every day the sinner, the gambler, left his house for the casino. (laughs) The devish uh, waited outside his house already. Every time he left for the casino to gamble, the devish put a stone uh, opposite of his house, in front of his door. So every time he marked it like that, he intended for the gambler to be reminded of his evil sin so that he cannot forget that he's a sinner every day, you know. 
Hopefully one day he will cure himself. So the gambler, each time he left his house and go for the casino, he felt very, very guilty. And each time he come back, <laughs> he saw another stone on the pile outside of his house. Did you ever see those stone piling on top of each other? Oh, the Tibetan does that a lot. Maybe it's a similar story. Maybe the person who went on pilgrim put a stone there for the sin of his neighbor or something. <laughs> or maybe himself, yes. In the old tradition, there was one Chinese woman. She also cure herself this way. Whenever she does the wrong thing, she put a black bean in the left side jar. Whenever she does a good thing, she put a white bean on the right side jar. So like that, she knows how much good she did and how much bad she did. And slowly, slowly, more white and less black. <laughs> So there were two people involved here. The gambler, every time he passed the stone, oh, he felt terrible, guilty, yes. And the dervish who put the stone there feel very angry and more like agitated, you know, toward the gambler, like he has not changed. Today I still have to put another stone on for him. And he was very angry, you know, negative feeling. That's a really busy body. Just go home, meditate, maybe. <laughs> It's better for him. But no, he wait in front of the house all day so that he can see the men come and go because the man doesn't always go at the regular time, I don't think. Gambling is not like a job, is it? Yeah. Not like you go from eight o'clock, you go back at five. <laughs> no. So the devil must have been like standing in front of this guy's house or sit in front of his house all day waiting until he's gone, waiting here to come back. Therefore, of course, he's angry too, hmm? sitting in the cold like this, you know, <laughs> waiting outside. Not only he feel angry with the gambler, but he also feel a sense of pleasure, you know, because he's recording somebody else's sin, feeling that he's so good, so holy, and that person so sinful, and he's doing a righteous job, you know, recording somebody else's sinful act. And he feel pleasure as well. Angry at that gambler, but feel good about himself, proud. Now, this stone business going on for 20 years. <laughs> Both of them are very, very persistent. Huh? One is very persistent in gambling, <laughs> and the other one persistent in recording the gambling habit. If only you guys are so persistent like that, you become Buddha in no time. <laughs> Now, the gambler, every time he passed the stones, he thought about himself. He thought about that how he should change, you know, uh, his uh, habit, change his life, and he should become better, yeah? But he thinks to himself, he's such a guilty person, he's so bad, he wouldn't even understand goodness. He wished he could understand goodness. And then he feels that the holy person there, how he's so good in working for his redemption, yeah, for his sin. And he always thinking, ah, Wouldn't it be better? How would it be nice if I become like him, you know, like the devil saint? But I don't think I could even repent. I could not even repent and change my life. Not to talk about becoming like him, because his place, I mean the devil's place, is surely a high, 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 high in heaven that I could never dream of touching his feet, And he must be, you know, chosen among the saintly elect in heaven. If he left this world, you know, after he died, you know, a devil surely will sit among the chosen elect in heaven. He was thinking all this goodness about the devil and uh, feeling shameful of himself <laughs> every day, but continue doing it because he's... Uh, kind of impulsive gambler, addictive, 
he can't quit. Some people can't quit, that's what they say. But he feel guilty for 20 years, can you imagine? <laughs> but at least he felt the goodness from the dervish. So it's a mixed feeling, you know? He feel good about the dervish and feel guilty about himself. He feel like he could never change his way of life, and he feel, oh, the dervish is really so sanely working for his sake, you know, to redeem him. One, <laughs> so called holy man thinking, and the other guy, the sinner thinking, both of them thinking. Now we see what heaven thinks. One day it happened that there's a natural disaster in that area, and both of the men die at the same time. And both of them went in front of the angel. The angel of death came. And the angel said to the sinner, you know, the gambler, very gently and lovingly, you are to come with me to heaven. So the gambler was very, you know, <laughs> very shocked and said, how can this be? You must be mistaken. <laughs> yeah, I am a sinner. I should go to hell. Uh, you are looking for the devotee, I think, you know, the devish. Uh, he's uh, right there. He's not me, that guy. Uh, who always sat opposite my house, who has tried to reform me for two decades. So that is a man you are looking for. So the angels say, the devotee? <laughs> the devil? No, no, no. <laughs> he will be taken to the lower regions, since he has to be roasted on a spit. So the gambler could not bear anymore. He screamed. <laughs> he said, what kind of justice is this? Yeah? <laughs> he forget his own, you know, destiny. He said, you must have gotten the instruction wrong. <laughs> it's the opposite. So the angel said, no, no, not like that, not so. Yeah. I shall explain to you now. It is thus. The devotee has been indulging himself for 20 years with feeling of superiority and uh, merit. Now it is his turn to redress the balance. He really put those stones on that pile for himself, not for you. What mean for himself? To feel proud, to have something to do because he has nothing to do. And the gambler still beside himself, asking, but, but what have I done to earn the reward of heaven? So the angels say, you are to be rewarded because every time you pass the dervish, your thought first of goodness and secondly of the dervish. It is goodness not man, which is rewarding you for your fidelity. Wow, that's a very good story, huh? Why do you think the devilish is punished and the soccer sinner is rewarded? Because the devilish was focusing on something negative, but the gambler was actually focusing on something positive inside. That's right, that's right. The Darvish was very proud of himself being a good man. Right, right. In fact, he is? He wasn't. Not too good, right. <laughs> Sitting in front of his house all the day just to focus on the negative things. So this is why we have the three monkeys. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> no look, no talk, no hear. <laughs> Yes, that's why the uh, Bible also says, judge not, so that you shall not be judged. Yeah, whatever we think, so shall we get, huh? Oh, that is a problem. So now, it is also very bad of the gambler as well. If he is not gambling, then the dervish wouldn't have to focus on that bad quality of him. But this is not a very high judgment, mind you, okay? This is probably just the law of the Lord of Karma or maybe the astral region, heaven 
and astral region hell only. If the guy is not gambling for 20 years or turn around and change his bad habit, né? then the devils would have been less focused on the negativity. Yes, yes. It's also good also that he has been corrected because he took upon himself as a job to go and reproach in people. If the gambler wasn't there, he probably would go and look in for somebody else who does something else, yeah? Uh, drinking alcohol or maybe some womanizer or whatever that might be, huh? Yes? Wasn't his, his motive was so bad to make him elevate himself by putting down the other? Isn't that what was so wrong about what he was doing? Uh, perhaps so, also. Perhaps the thing is that he wasn't well practicing himself, yes. And uh, being a devish, he should focus more on his own development first before he can correct somebody else. That is why we have the diary for you, spiritual diary. <laughs> Check yourself every day and not checking anybody else. We never know how much we progress yet. We never know how pure we are, so we can't even judge somebody else. Maybe he tried to put down others because, in fact, he's not that good. A good person wouldn't sit in front of somebody else's house and knows into his business, no matter how bad, how good, yeah? And keep doing this kind of thing. He feel himself superior. But this is also a lesson for us that we should never do any bad thing to provoke somebody else into thinking negatively about us even, yeah? That's why we must keep the five precepts, so that we will not be the cause of somebody else's trouble hmm? or bad karma, see? Even though maybe haven't judged this correctly about the devils, but if suppose in the whole vicinity of the devil's town, there's nobody who does any sinful thing, then the devils would have no chance to commit this kind of judgmental attitude uh, or sin or the act of judging other people. Mm. Even though he has this kind of character within him, but if there's no sinner around, huh? no negative things happening, then he wouldn't be focused on it. And maybe he has more chance to focus within himself. Nevertheless, that is not a good excuse either for the devils who are supposed to look inward and not look outward. But maybe we can make a good excuse for this devils, maybe because at that time he was just a devils by name, just like people registered to become Christian or Buddhist, but they don't even practice anything. The teaching of the Christian, they don't even know it. <laughs> they don't even read the Bible. So they don't know even the Bible tells us not to eat meat. Be you not among the meat eater and the wine drinker even, not among the people, not, not to talk about that we eat meat and drink wine ourselves. How obvious it is, but how many people read it and how many people understand it. Vegetarianism in Religion The Baha'i Faith Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i writings of some aspects of health and healing. Buddhism. All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra. Also, after the birth of the baby, care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat. Because, at the difficult time of birth, there are innumerable evil demons, monsters and goblins who want to consume the smelly blood. By ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Kasiti Garba Sutra. Be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying, or creating evil karma by worshipping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities. 
because such killing and slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state. Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra. Cow die. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints. Christianity, meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood, and if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adelila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures, lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith. Jainism. A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga. Judaism. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. So to be somebody, to be a religious person, we have to practice the religious doctrine, not just by name. Too many are names and not real, huh? just name. So the master here who told this story, I want to illustrate that, that even if you call yourself a devish, but if you don't practice the teaching of the, the devish, then it's no use. You even earn yourself hell, yeah? Because maybe you just read the devish teaching. You don't gamble, you don't drink wine, you don't do that, you don't do this. Oh, you just read it. And then you go out and check. Whoever drink, whoever gamble, oh, this is a terrible, this is an atheist, this is bad, so we have to correct them. We have to judge them, we have to criticize them, something like that. This is no good. Yeah. 
So now we know already that we should not focus on anybody's uh, shortcomings, even if it's true or not. Because sometimes they doing bad things outside, but inside they are repenting, yeah, and always humble themselves. At least they cannot cup their compulsive tendency, but at least they are humble, yeah, and they remember God and repenting every day for what they're doing. Yeah, repenting, do it again, but repent again, <laughs> at least. <laughs> always focus on God or on goodness. Yeah, to repent, you know? Because if you repent, mean you think of God, right? You think of the goodness side. Yeah. There was a joke about a bus driver and a priest. A bus driver and a priest died at the same time and went to the pearly gate. And uh, St. Peter gave the bus driver, very big, beautiful house with the UFO to run around and everything, swimming pool and a lot. <laughs> and he gave the priest just a small wood cabin, uh, no facility, not much. So the priest would say, but it must be a mistake. I should be the one given the big mansion and all the facilities. He is just a bus driver. I am the servant of the Lord. Yeah, I dedicate all my life, yeah, my youth, everything in my life, I dedicate the whole lifetime to serve the Lord. How come you give me such a small little wood house and the bus driver, such a big mansion with <laughs> UFO to fly around back to earth to visit even? <laughs> Just a joke. I'm not sure if they have UFO up there. <laughs> I'm not sure if they even need UFO, okay. So now, St. Peter said, yeah, you are the priest, but every time you preach a sermon in the church, everybody went to sleep. <laughs> and whenever the bus driver drive his bus, everybody pray. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this is very terrible to be punished for piling the stone, right? <laughs> Can you imagine the bricks layers? <laughs> what do you get? So many bricks, so many houses. Just joking, huh? You know, right? It's a motive, it's important, eh? It's not just your action, even. Yeah. Wow, it is something to think about, huh? It's a very good story, yeah. This part is very famous in the Bible, you know? When I was in a temple in New York, there was a man, a young man, and his mother just died. And he's a Buddhist. His mother is Christian, maybe Catholic, maybe <laughs> evangelist. So he called me at the temple. I was staying at the temple in New York. He called me, he said, my mother's dying. And uh, she's Christian, you know, I don't know uh, what to do. I don't know Christian stuff. I cannot recite the Buddhist sutra for her because she won't listen to it. So I said, okay, you have a Bible in your home? He said, yes, my mother has one. I said, okay, open it and uh, look at the index. You find one with the Psalm of David, yeah? At that time, I even remember what number. I told him it's a Psalm 23, you know, like the Divine Shepherd. Yes. He said, uh, what would it sound like, you know, in case I got it wrong and I don't know whether I read the right one or not? I said, okay. It begins like, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. Oh, and then he heard that and he said, 
oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I say, of course it is. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's from the Bible. You should know that. He said, okay. Now I know I'm going to read that for my mother because at that time he couldn't find the priests yet. You know, the priests are always busy, yeah? Either they are talking mass or they have to go to funeral and or they have to go to uh, a wedding, yeah? So anyway, <laughs> it happened that his mother is dying and he, he has to read something for her, you know, worrying that she died before the priest come. But I said to him, don't worry, the soul will listen. Yeah, the soul we know, even if your mother has left the body, her soul will listen, so don't worry. He said, but he still like to read something. You know, I said, that's a very good idea. Very good idea. You read it before she goes. It's better than after she goes, because his mother was in great pain at that time also, dying but with pain, because she was sick, you know. She had cancer. Also, most people at the time of death, they struggle a lot. They struggle a lot because if they have not got any definite answer to where they are going before they left the planet, then they feel very, very a struggle, you know, suffering. They worry where they're going. You know, they don't want to leave this planet. They don't want to leave the body. They have been used to it for so long. So the struggle makes it more painful, very, very painful. That's why and when many people die, you, you see them, you know, withering, you know, and uh, have an expression of suffering because of the struggle. They cannot let go. But if you are a believer and have great faith, yeah, in any religion, as long as it's a good religion, you know, that teach you nonviolence, teach you to be an honest person and to believe in God, and you truly live a life of honesty and peace, Yes, and of a good neighbor, yeah, good human. Then you will go in peace. Yes, you don't struggle. And when you die, the angel will come and get you instead of darkness or the angel of death or some evil-looking entity that scares you. And that's what makes you struggle even more, yeah, clinging to life because you are scared of where you're going. So I told the son to read this to the mother, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not fear. And he felt very at peace immediately. He said, oh, it's beautiful, because I was really in pain of what to do for my mother. He was a Buddhist, you know. He belonged to the temple where I stay at that time. And he's a disciple of the abbot of that temple that I stay. So I say, but uh, it's the same, either Buddhist or Christian, you know, in the Bible or in the Buddhist scripture, they only teach people to do good things. So you read it to your mother, read with love and faith, yeah, that uh, God will take care of her and ease her fear. He said he will uh, immediately. I said, okay, now you go read it now. Yes. So I want to read it for you today. Any of you, <laughs> the angel come already or not yet? <laughs> Oh, the inner master told you anything? Three days, two days, one week, <laughs> two days, two years? <laughs> you are told two years? I think you said something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What I mean is if the planet go, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. If nothing is done according to the benevolence law of heaven, then uh, if we go the opposite direction of the benevolent law, then then we go the opposite direction, that's it, you know? Mm. Anyway, two years, four years, it doesn't matter too much to us. We do what we can until the last minute, okay? You inform people, you meditate, mm? just like we're doing here, and uh, do what we can, yeah? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter really, yeah? We save the planet, not for us in any case, but we still do it, yeah? If we can, we do it. Mm? And maybe we still can do it. <laughs> yeah? Mm. Now, I want to share this beautiful prayer with you. It's one of the Psalms of David. He made many good uh, prayer, you know, and songs. Very nice. It will inspire people when they read it, you know, to have more faith in God instead of their ego. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside 
still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Staff, not personnel, no? staff means <laughs> the stick, the staff. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. yes. That's it? Mm -hmm. That's just one of it. You want to hear some more? Yes. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in His tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says. Seek His face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off, do not forsake me. O God of my salvation, if my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path. Because of my enemies, do not give me up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me. They are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Okay. Okay, there are much more. <laughs> Any question concerning this? According to the sentence, someone dying 
Yes, shepherd. Yes. I didn't care because I I was Buddhist before initiation. Yes. I felt God's love from the sentence. Yes, yes. She felt very, very special today because today is Christmas. Uh -huh. So that sentence feels so much to her. Yeah, I'm glad. Sickness is our own doing. Either from the past glaucoma or this life glaucoma. Mostly after initiation, you should not have sickness anymore. Just maybe eat something wrong, not knowing, or knowing but thinking, oh, just a little bit, doesn't matter. Maybe she should change her diet. Just eat what she herself cook, or, you know, what she wants, you know. Uh, she herself cook or the nearby person cook and not to buy things from outside. Or maybe eat simple food. There are many diets that prescribe to get well. Yeah, nowadays, yeah? It's all over on internet and on Supreme Master Television. The practitioners should take care to eat pure food. And if you feel that you still have but karma, then change to the karma-less food that I have taught you on the Supreme Master Television. To be sure, that will help you to lessen the bad karma. Initiation is to give you the privilege of enlightenment and to enter sainthood. But you are responsible to take care of that privilege. We all have to be responsible for our own self, especially after initiation. And you have been told what to do. You have been told how to protect yourself and how to even not to make any new bad karma. Hmm? You make your own miracle. Just like when it's cold, you wear warm clothes. Mm -hmm. When you're dirty, you take a shower. Your mother taught you how. So if you don't do that, don't come running back to mother always when you are having a cold, or sneezing, or something else, etc. To love me is to do what is good for you, not clinging to my physical body or presence, and then do everything else differently. So I want you to show me your love, not to talk about it. You know already that uh, Master Power take care of you, yeah? But you also must take care, huh? If the doctor gives you medicine, you don't take. And you keep going to the doctor again and say, please uh, bless her, please uh, cure her. How? Don't tell me you love me. Don't say anything like that. Just take care of yourself. When I see you well, happy, practicing diligently and progress in your spiritual practice, then I know you love me. Truly like that. Even you don't say it, I know it. Ego is our enemy, eh? Yes, when you do something, oh, I want to help you, I want to help you. And then when they help a little bit, they become big shot. The ego cheat them, say, oh, I do it, I do this, I do that. We have to subdue the ego before we can do anything big. Because if the ego is too big, we can't do anything. We are not one with the divine. And a little training like that, we should take it seriously. Because that's the first step to go higher into the higher dimension, higher level of practice. But no, very difficult to deal with the ego. So we have to check ourselves, okay? Check it all the time, every day. And what we're doing, whether it's correct or not. Yeah? And listen to the ego is the worst thing you could do. <laughs> worst thing you could do to yourself. I just hope. You you learn from somebody else's lesson also. <laughs> yes. Because maybe it's not you now, but if you are in his position or her position, maybe you do the same stuff. You can't check it quick enough. The ego comes out before you even know where you are. <laughs> and then you can't check it fast enough. That's the problem. That's why you have to do the diary every day. But uh, that's also you can cheat, you know. <laughs> you would say, oh, no. 
som tænkte, nå. Øh, mest skønt at nå. Ego, nå. Specielt ego, nå. Nå, og mit nå er nå, 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 nå igen. I don't have. Me? I have ego, nå. <laughs> you know? These are for you to train yourself, truly checking you out, you see? So you don't uh, always feel too proud of yourself. Somebody gave me a very funny joke. It's a joke about the beginning of Eden, you know? In the beginning, God made whom? Adam. So he made Adam, yeah? And then Adam complained that he's lonely, yeah? He's alone, of course, yeah? You should be happy that you're alone, no? I be happy all the time when I'm alone, my God. <laughs> Nobody knows the blessing of being alone more than I do. Oh, I enjoy, 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 and I don't feel lonely at all. When I'm alone, then I just uh, am very blissful, you know, inside. And I'm very lazy to go out, very lazy to come even to see you. But I know you need to see me, so I come out. <laughs> And I also enjoy seeing you. It's not like that I don't enjoy seeing you. If you were not there, I would not come out. Thank God that you are there. <laughs> Or maybe I just stay in the cave forever, who knows, you know? Oh, it feels so good, you don't want to go out. No. <laughs> no? A joke, huh? Oh. In the beginning, God made Adam, huh? And Adam complained that he's lonely. Yeah. So God said, okay, I will make a companion for you who will make you feel happy and not lonely. Good. God made? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> That won't be a joke. That will be trouble. <laughs> a joke cannot have Eve in there. She is serious, man. <laughs> She made him eat the apple against his will, and he's stuck there forever. You know, all the men have the apple here. Most of them. <laughs> some more, some less, you know. Okay. So, God made a... Yes. Apple. A dog. <laughs> apple. Apple exists before Adam comes. God made the apples before Adam, madam. <laughs> That's why when Adam came out, God said, don't eat the apple. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, God made a dog to accompany Adam with all the beautiful attributes, you know, loyalty, love, unconditional affection, you know, obedience, warm heart, companionship, everything. Yes. So Adam asked God, What shall I name him? Because I name all the animals already, but nothing like this one. What shall I name him? So God said, okay, since he is, you know, a reflection of me to accompany you, so you can call him dog, you know? <laughs> Opposite. <laughs> yeah, well, because we have English at that time. In other language, it might not be easy to translate that. It might not be the same, you know? Okay, it's English is convenient, huh? For God even to explain things. Okay, so God made him a dog. Oh, of course, the dog is lovely, yeah? And Adam was very happy. Dog is happy too. And then after a while, God asked some angel to come down and check how is he doing, whether he's still lonely, is he progress, you know, in his spiritual practice, anything at all? Better character or anything? So God told some angel come down, check Adam's out. Oh, the angel came back reporting something that God is not very pleased with. The angel said to God, You know, ever since you gave him that dog as companion, he became arrogant, self-conceited, and very, very, uh, very uh, big ego. <laughs> And God said, how can that be? I gave him a loving, faithful, obedient companion. He should emulate that character. Instead, how can he become arrogant? How can that be? So the angel said, yeah, because the dog listened to his every whim. <laughs> I always obey him and make him feel like the king of the universe. 
Yeah. That he feel like nobody better than him. The dog made him feel absolutely, you know, top. <laughs> yes, top of the world. That's why he became very arrogant. He thinks he's the best now. <laughs> he's the king of the whole universe. You know, that he's perfect, yes, and he's intelligent, and he's a, a master, everything that is uh, impossible for a man. He has no humility anymore. Yes, he thinks he's the best and he's the only one in the whole world now. So God said, oh, that won't do. <laughs> that won't do. <clears throat> so he thought of a plan. He said, oh, okay, I know. I will make him another companion. Opposite will make him know that he's nobody. <laughs> so can you think that God made now? The cat. the cat, that's correct. You know the story? Oh, you just guess. Guess, huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know the cat, that's why. So he made him a cat. And from then on, whenever he looked into the cat's eyes, he feel he's imperfect. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever he called the cat to come, the cat just ignore him. <laughs> and he begin to feel unsure <laughs> of his mastership. <laughs> he begin to feel less and less confident every day. And slowly he feel like he was nobody. <laughs> Whenever the, he called, the cat didn't come. He told the cat what to do. The cat couldn't care less. And, you know, day in, day out like that. So his arrogance was off. Now God uh, told the angel come down and check him. Say, oh, he's better now. <laughs> My Lord, he doesn't think he's the top anymore. He doesn't think he's perfect anymore. He doesn't think he's anybody anymore. So God said, oh, that's good. God is very happy. And then Eden, you know, become happy again. And the man also happy. And the dog's also happy because the man feel contented now. You know, he's nobody anyway. He couldn't be any worse than nobody. So he's also beginning to feel happy, you know, true happiness. And the dogs are very happy, as usual, and the cat couldn't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> but I think later, God get to be more clever. He made a woman instead. <laughs> Even better than both the dog and the cat combined. Huh? Yeah. Since then, yeah, Adam behaved. <laughs> All right. Um, you happy now, yeah? Yes. Mm. yes. i see you in a while. <笑>不是要吃饼干好 那会跳的<笑> 自信是最好以前好久好久好久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久久
在那个西藏那边，哈、哦，靠近西藏了，啊，边界那边，中国跟西藏在一起。嗯，他本来不是说没人要啦，哈、哦，这单独过日不是了，他有一个先生啊，而且生出来一个男孩子，结果两个都去哪里？啊，上天了，哈、哦、，OK。所以他才一个人单身独饮，独五根啊。他哈、啊、有一块小小的地啊，他跟那一块小地就可以度的过日，嗯，过日子，嗯。他种那些这种五谷啦，哈、啊，然后可以卖一些过日这样子，嗯。因为他的那个生活哈，从小啊到大，都是经过很多苦难、很多考验、很多辛苦的情况，所以他觉得，或许他的业障太深重了，所以他一天到晚很诚信呢，去找名师那个修行，嗯。即使他也找不到什么名师啦，是他是是叫伟都问了那个村的人呐、啊，他认识谁他就问谁就对了啊。他问有没有什么办法可以洗掉业障，哈啊，问到底了以后，有一个就朝圣回来的人呢、啊，就可怜他，就啊、呃、跟他说一个呃办法哈、啊，他就说他去朝圣的时候哈。啊有一位那个喇嘛传给他一个呃神咒了啊，就观音菩萨的传下来的一个神咒，如果念这个，呃，一定会少业障啊！哇，他很高兴高兴，那个就是 Om Mani p a m e h o n 啊，高兴快乐学下去了。这个人哈、哦，他是乡下的那个老姑娘。<笑>一字也不懂，嗯，从来没上学过，而且，啊、呃，古代的女孩子不能上学，你们都知道了哈，啊，我们那个社会目前还是重男轻女的，啊，不过以前呢，好好好好好久那个以前，就更重男的，啊，如果一个男一个女两个一样的那个身材哈，要一样的那个重量哈。两个放在两边那个站起来的话，一定是男是沉下来的，<笑>重男嘛，啊重男，<笑>太重了一点，沉下去，重男轻女，他就不能上学，他不学什么东西，所以都不懂那个很多字不懂，一字不懂，然后人家教他怎么念，他就怎么念，不过。他啊，因为不懂字嘛，又老了嘛，很辛苦了。人家叫他 “om mani p a m e h o n 他就说 “om mani p a m e k u o m mani p a m e 什么啦，不管啦，啊，他也是这样念下去 ：“om mani p a m e k u o m mani p a m e k u 啊，啊，也许是那边的那个方言方语了吧，哈。因为跟我去台湾的时候嘛，我第一次去台湾哈，我去寺庙听人家那个绕佛嘛，一边绕一边念阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，陀佛啊，念到以后就念陀佛，陀佛，陀佛，啊，你们都知道了哈，啊，因为念念快嘛，越快越越多啊，越多就把那个佛的那个名字把它弄短了啊，阿弥陀佛嘛。阿弥陀佛啊！不过你念越多的话，越有功德嘛。那个人家有这样这么说，所以他就把它弄短了，就变成“陀佛”这样子。阿弥陀佛嘛，就台湾那个福建语啦，就讲阿弥陀佛啊，陀佛陀佛。然后念着越快越陀佛，陀佛陀佛陀佛陀佛陀佛陀佛陀佛。我也是刚来的时候，连国语也不懂，还问台语，就去那个。台语的寺庙嘛，然后他请我吃饭嘛，啊，然后我我边吃的边喝东西啊，也有茶什么都有了，啊，那和尚问我，喝假
喝茶。<笑>我那个时候我就知道喝茶就是喝茶嘛 ，tea 嘛啊。喝喝水，我说有了有了呵呵，我就说一句而已，我都别的不懂。他啊，等一下，他就说不不，喝茶不喝茶。我说喝茶了，喝茶了，有了有了，我就拿拿那瓶茶上来喝给他看。我说有喝茶了，他就摇摇头了 ，OK， 然后两个都笑了 ，OK 了呵呵，笑就 OK 了啊。我认为他问我要喝茶吗？啊，喝茶喝，喝茶，意思说好不好吃了？啊，啊喝茶不？<笑>台湾，<笑>意思说，我都听的一一半一半，我说有有喝茶了，有喝茶。啊<笑>，语言也是很好玩 ，OK， 好，那我们这边这个老太婆了哈，她就念阿弥陀佛咪哭了啊，阿弥陀佛咪哭，她就这都念不对就对了，不过没关系。他因为想陪自己押韵，而且也鼓励自己的嘛，所以平常我们都有那个呃佛教或是天主教或是什么教，多数都有那个念咒那个柱子哈啊、哦。他因为呃乡下的老姑娘嘛，啊、呃、没有去哪里，而且那个朝圣的人他自己有一个，自己念哪里又给他，已经很好心叫他那个咒语已经很了不起了啊。本来自己要去才行的啊，就像你们嘛，去自己本人要去应信了啊，别人不能替代了。OK， 好，那他没有那个念咒的那个柱子，所以他他用那个豆子，<笑>黄豆黑豆无所谓了，反正豆子就对了。嗯，他就嗯放两个杯子嘛，两面嘛，两个碗呐，啊，一个是空的，一个是有那个豆子满的。然后每次他念完一句哈，他就把那一颗豆，呃，就丢到那个另外那个空碗那边去，这样丢。Om mani padme ku, mani padme ku, mani padme ku, tohu tohu tohu, mani padme ku. OK， 这样子，他一天到晚这样念哈，啊，就知道自己，而且他也可以那个算多少了哈，因为你们如果修那个密宗哈，跟西藏的和尚修就知道了哈。啊，你的和尚会叫你念这个，呃，多少百遍哈，或或是多少千遍这样子，你这样子你才知道你有没有念嘛啊，不然的话，我我回去念，不过都没念啊，所以有有念有算这样才知道真的有念啊，然后有有一个那个目的可以得到嘛，哦，我要今天念一百，然后明天又有两百，啊，几天我就变成一千一万了，念太多累嘛。所以他发明那个法轮哈啊，你念一句而已，不过你转得很快的话，<笑>就都好像我们几几十句一样，最少这样子啊、哦，太方便了、哎。你们也可以这样子，所以他们就每个都西藏的多数都有那个法轮嘛哈，又又没有这个念咒的住持的话，就有那个法轮这样子哈，也是很好呢。这样把你那个头脑比较没有空想乱七八糟，也是很有帮助哈。他因为没有就是那个法具嘛，所以他用那个黄豆这样子念啊掉过去，然后这个碗就空了，他就从那边就掉回来啊这样子念过来念过去，过来过去这样，嗯。他哦非常非常诚心的，就念错不过，非常诚心，每天这样念，然后那个豆啊，念到。三十年了，已经三十年了，啊！但念到一半的时候，因为他很诚心嘛，所以以后那那些豆啊，他不等他拿了，他自己跳过去。他念到一句咒语，这样呢，一颗豆他自己会自动的跳过去的。哦，好厉害！也许有 battery， 诚心到这种程度哎，啊，很感人哈。因为他看那个豆啊，一次自动跳过来跳过去，他也觉得哦，他也许那个呃，他的修行成果也是蛮不错啦，哈，所以蛮蛮快乐，也继续念下去。然后那那些豆也继续掉，<笑>哦，两个一起陪哈，很舒服。嗯，有一天呢，就是有一位那个高僧大德哈，从西藏进瓜，他那里，嗯。还没有到他那个草案的时候，他就看到
，哦，很大的好光啊，在他那个房子里面发出来，嗯，在屋顶上面都亮了。所以这位大德，他已经也是也是蛮有修行，才能够看到这样子么大光啊。所以他就认为哈、啊，里面这个房子里面一定有什么高圣大德在里面。因为那个很大的喇嘛、林波切什么的活佛的在里面的，所以他就很快就冲进去哈啊，要要拜访哦。那个老姑娘<笑>看到这位高僧大的哦，难得哎，哪里有这样那么福报，就有一位那个高僧大的的喇嘛进来他的房子看他呢哦，他就拜下去了，然后茶啊、饭啊做供养，嗯。一边拜他，然后一边还是念那个我们那边没哭了，嗯，然后，这位高僧大德还觉得很惊讶啊，他不晓得，那个豪光啊，那么大的豪光从哪里来的，因为，他不会怀疑，他没有怀疑这位那个那么尊卑的一个老姑娘，老太婆的。他一次看东看西啊，看东看西。不过那个草庵是很小啊，看哪里也是空空的。<笑>老太婆又那么贫穷啊，也没什么多东西在里面，你说银墙什么？他看了，他觉得没有人啊，觉得奇怪的很。嗯，然后他就跟他那个聊天嘛，他说啊，你你念什么啦？是不是呃有修行啊？他说。我念这个咒语嘛，啊，我修行已经啊三十年了。那个他还怀疑，他说这边还有没有别人啊？你的家还有没有别人？他说没有，我一个人孤独，已经三十年了。然后这位高僧大德的喇嘛就问他：啊、哦，你一个人这样子，一定会很孤独吧？啊，还会觉得很那个很孤独了哈，没有人陪。然后。那老姑娘就说：“不会呀、啊，不会。即使我一个人，不过、啊、天天我有念咒啊，有修行啊，有那个整理自己身口意，嗯，还有惭愧，天天有惭愧。所以我希望那个下一辈子回来，呃，没有比这辈子那么痛苦这样子，啊，比较好一点。他还没敢想到那个什么高寡位了，意思说。”下世再来做人，没这这一辈子这么辛苦，他已经很觉得呵呵能够这样子，他觉得很满足了，来不及了。嗯，所以我没有空想到自己孤独或是不孤独。嗯，特别从那个有一位很好心的朝圣回来的，传给我这句咒语了以后，哇，我。身心更快乐，天天忙了念呢、啊，没有想到自己的那个啊、呃、生活怎么样啊，所以很快乐，很快乐。然后，嗯，那位高僧大的就问他，他就念这些什么嘛？他就说：“阿弥陀佛，没哭了。<笑>”<笑>然后，那位高僧大的就觉得哦，可怜可怜，可惜可惜。你浪费你三十年念错了，念没有用啊，嗯，所以那位呃老姑娘哦，这个时候才恍然大悟，觉得哦，三十年花费那么多功夫，结果念错了，所以他请那个高僧大德，请他帮他纠正一下。当然，那个老高僧大德就马上就跟他纠正了，哦，他就感激不尽了。不过很懊恼，很懊恼，三十年功夫浪费掉。既然这样子，他又拜他，感激他不尽。然后从那个时候，那就开始修那个阿弥陀佛灭空了。然后他还感激那位和尚，呃，他拜他好几几十拜，说谢谢您啊、呃，还好你纠正那个。还有时间呢，不然等一下我死了也浪费一辈子，又重新回来，又做人很辛苦啊。所以那位那个高僧大德喇嘛就跟他，谁有拿啦啦啊，好让他在那边鼓励他继续念咒修行，然后他自己本人也是要登录了啊，要做别的去别的地方。
从那个时候，他就念唵嘛呢叭咪吽啊。不过他的心没有那么专啊，因为他觉得还浪费时间了，而且好惭愧啊，好后悔啊，又很懊恼啊，所以他心没办法转。他就念了，整念的很很对的，不过心的不不舒服，不快乐，然后那些豆也不快乐，他们没元气可以跳了，所以他念，然后呃豆就躺在那边不动。说他还要用手，再重新再来啊，弄回去，嗯。然后他一边念一边想到他三十年功劳哈，没有用的，所以心里很懊恼，很懊恼，啊。然后那位高僧大德还走了一段路哈，一段路，就他那个回头看那个老太婆那个草案啊，一回头看了。好官都不见了，哦，觉得那个曹安进来很乌乌暗暗的，又很看起来很懊恼、很忧愁的。他就突然间，啊，他突然间知道了，他知道他本人哈，好意不过害人的，让那个老太婆自己就乱掉了，精神乱掉了，念不专心，所以他就赶快。他就赶快回回去，回去看那个老太婆，他就跟他笑笑说：“哎，我刚才跟你开玩笑啦，啊，你念这样才对啦，哎，继续念跟以前一样才 OK。”哈哈，好，然后那个老太婆就说：“你为什么骗我呢？”然后这个老妈没办法，就说：“哎呀。”我就考验你那个诚心嘛，啊，继续念，继续念，跟以前一样。Om Mani Padme Ku， Om Mani Padme Ku， Om Mani Padme Ku， 记得吗？啊、哦，当然那个老太婆很高兴的说：“哦，谢谢佛祖，谢谢佛祖。”啊，刚才我认为我三十年功夫都丢了，所以很懊恼。哦，谢谢老高僧哈、啊、指点啊，然后，当然那个高僧大德就。离开了，然后那个老太婆继续念了，那个我们那边没哭，然后就逗就继续，跳啊跳来跳去这样子快乐 ，OK。然后那位高僧大的那个喇嘛哈，走了一段路，又再回头看看，看他那个草案，哦，好看，又再很亮很亮啊，比以前还要亮的，因为他现在又跟。有鼓励了，鼓励了，信心了，哦，亮得很。然后，当然那位高僧大德喇嘛也是很舒服，也笑笑，然后自己走。嗯 ，OK， 懂了哈。啊。道场里面有吗？就是就是、就是、也许没有这个了，没有那个 save the planet 那些。我装这个以后就觉得要去那个罗马那边。Vatican 啊，很像啊，哎，啊，圣诞节嘛，没关系嘛，走走走走，去打招呼，打招呼。你们想看我，我就带过去。Reverse orbit to save the planet. Lucky you no no photo yet. Okay, lay down and go sleep now. Yeah, help me. Okay, today is still Christmas a little, huh? I'm reading you the Bible, okay? <laughs> That's my good thing here. We should read, huh? Yeah. It's very, very easy. So we don't even need to explain it, you know? <laughs> now, these are some of the very beautiful reading in the Bible. These are very nice 
Sam, you know, of uh, King David. Yes, they're very beautiful, very poetic. I liked them a lot when I was younger. Huh? I still like them, though. But there are so many other scriptures, you know, so we cannot always uh, read one. Otherwise, Sam of David is very nice. Hamid, you read it? <laughs> no? All right. I read then, huh? This psalm is called Exhortation to Patience and Trust. Patience and trust to whom? Trust God. Trust the divine, yeah? That we are going to be provided what we need, yeah? Sometimes what we want is not what we need, okay? You must know the difference between what we want and what we need. So here it is what we need only. Because what we need is very little, yeah? What we want is a lot. Mm. So, it says here, Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good deed. So you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. This seems very easy, but how many people truly can do this, huh? You know, we all say, oh, we love God and we trust God, but sometimes we don't. Remember the guy falling, just a joke I told you long ago, the guy who was falling from the cliff, you know, and then he got hold of the branches and hang on in there. So at that time he prayed to the Lord, you know, he said, oh, Lord, I know I have not been a very good Christian and I didn't pray to you often and I didn't go to the church at all. <laughs> and I didn't read the Sam David 37 ever. <laughs> but please help me now. <laughs> I promise I will go to the church every Sunday. I will help the poor, you know, and I will praise your name. He was sincere and praying. So he heard the voice boom from the sky and said, Okay, okay, let go of the branch and I will help you. So the guy said, Oh, oh, anybody there? Anybody else there? <laughs> Understand? <laughs> anybody else is there? He could not let go of the branch. Because down there is the deep canyon, yeah? He thought if he let go, he would die. So this is a trust that we profess that we have, but we don't always have. Let's face it, life is difficult for us here, yeah? <laughs> and God seems to be too far. Yes. So sometimes we wanted to trust the Lord, not that we don't want, but it's very difficult, yeah? The temptation of this world, the difficulty of survival, and all the negativity that has been, you know, like bombarding us all the time. It's very difficult for us to think positive even, yeah? To even survive in this world is already very difficult, yeah? Not to talk about <laughs> even trusting the Lord, which we don't see. Yeah. So, for you guys who have seen the Lord, some part of the Lord while you meditate, you should trust more. Huh? Because when we see the Lord, then we can trust. If we don't see, it's difficult to trust, right? But now, after initiation, we know, yeah, more sure about there is a Lord somewhere. <laughs> and because when we pray, He answers has answers, so we know, oh, there is one now. So we have more trust, it's easier for us. But some poor people, they don't see God, it's very difficult for them to trust, yeah? We can't blame them. So here, King David, one of the ardent devotees of the Lord, of you know, of the old time, it's been recorded in here, he's saying, you know, probably his uh, exhortation to his disciples or to his near followers, yeah? A nearby person, relatives, friends, assistant, whatever. So he keep telling them this because probably some of them don't have trust in God. 
So it's very difficult for someone to take delight in the Lord. As he say here, you should take delight in the Lord. Okay, we love God. Maybe we trust God. But how to take delight in God? Huh? It's not that easy, is it? Huh? Yeah. So only the one who see God can really take delight in God. God may be not like a person or something, but we feel the love, we see the light, and then we can trust. Yes. And we can take delight in it because when we meditate and when we see our God or a portion of God or an attribute of God, then we can take delight in that. Of course, when we meditate deeply, we see the light. That is God, part of God, and we feel very, very happy with it. Yeah. Now, continue, he said to you. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. And he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light. And the justice of your cause like the noonday. Hmm. Wow. Can we do that? (laughs) Difficult, huh? It's very difficult to uh, do the will of God, right? It's very difficult. We try, but we can. Sometimes we cannot. Even if we have seen miracles, even if we have known God to some extent, sometimes our heart waver. So here King David reminds us that we should trust in Him, in God. Yeah, by the way, your presence here is a gift, yeah? Because you have trust in God, come here to meditate, yeah? And that is also a gift for me, big gift. Very wonderful gift for Christmas. Thank you. Okay, now, you see, King David told us that if we trust God, then God will act in this trust, in our trust. Yes. Of course, if we doubt, you know, then we obstruct ourselves. Do you understand me? If we doubt God, then like we build the wall in front of us, like between us and God, there is a wall. We don't trust that God does anything. So, of course, you know, you obstruct yourself. Not that God doesn't hear, not that God doesn't want to help you, but you put yourself in a prison, yeah, where you feel like God cannot reach you. And this is a very bad attitude for us. God doesn't care you trust Him or not. Of course, God is very pleased if His children trust Him and let Him help His children, but sometimes we cannot. So King David told us that He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. I mean, if you trust in the Lord, then, sooner or later, the cause of your situation will be very clear. For example, if somebody wrong you, somebody accuse you, something that you have not done, somebody persecuted you, somebody give you hard time, you will be protected by the Lord and your case will be openly clear to everybody, like noonday. <laughs> noonday is the clearest time of the day, right? The noon time, okay. But whoever can have so much trust like that, hmm? even the disciple of Jesus, yeah, uh, sometimes they have doubt the Master. But Jesus never had doubt about God. Even when He suffered on the cross, He say, Oh, Father, how you glorify me. You see, He could have escaped. He could have escaped. He knew it in advance that one of his disciples will betray him. He said that openly even, but he did not run away because he trusts whatever happened, it's according to God's will. Did you see the Vietnamese opera today? Yes. Yeah. It's a moral message for us, no? Yeah. Like the girl, the daughter-in-law, yeah? She doesn't want to run away. She doesn't escape because 
She think everything is done according to God's will. Yes, so she accepted because she also loves her husband. You see, this is how we should love God. Yes, then we can be united together with God. You know, in due time, in due time. Yes, it's very rare that somebody trusts God absolutely like Jesus. Yeah. That he just accept whatever happened for the sake of humanity and all beings on this planet. He came to do what he has to do, and he trusts that whatever God arranged, that would be perfect. The same, you know, similar to this situation, the story may be true or not true about the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law there, may be true, may be not true, but we could learn from it. It's similar to the situation of someone who is separated from their own soul, you know? Yeah. The union of the soul and the over-soul, mean God, that is just like the marriage like that, yeah? All kind of evil, all kind of obstruction came between the soul and God. But if we are patient, if we trust in the Lord, then we will have the happy reunion. In the end. Yeah, okay, we continue. Hmm. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil deeds. Yeah. So, King David reminds us that we should be still before the Lord. What does that mean? How come be still before the Lord? Mostly people say to you, go and pray, you know? <laughs> and pray the louder, the better, as the Lord is deaf, you know, as if he's deaf, he cannot hear you. You have to go and pray very loud. Mostly people pray loud, right? That's one thing. Or we can also sometimes pray loud, so we can hear our prayers. It's also some kind of uh, devotion. But here, the King David told us that be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. This is very strange. huh? Anybody knows what it means? Meditate. Meditate. Just sit there and wait until the Lord come. And don't talk too much. <laughs> don't have to even pray. Don't even, even ask anything. Of course, you ask if you want to, but you should not. Is God deaf that you have to talk so loud? Huh? Is God blind that He doesn't see your situation? Is God so unintelligent that <laughs> you have to explain to Him so much? You understand, yeah? Therefore, therefore, according to this advice from King David, be still and be patient, wait patiently. Yeah, we sit for long hours, no? That is being still, that is being patiently waiting. See? Perhaps at that time they don't have the word meditation. But this is the same. What else would you be still and be patient? What? Where? Huh? How should we do that? If not by sitting and contemplating and waiting, right? Yes. Yeah, so when you sit in meditation the way I have instructed you, you just be patient. Just sit there, right? Yes, yeah, sit as long as we can. Just remember the Lord. That's it. Wait for Him. That's it. I mean, remembering Him and just wait. Just sit there. Just the way we do. Hmm? But not like everybody can just sit and wait like that, of course, yeah? We have the purpose, right? And we know how to sit and how to wait also, yeah? Okay. So, do not fret over those who prosper in their way. Do not fret over those who carry out evil deeds. Okay. Okay. This is clear, right? If we see somebody who is very prosperous, Although they are doing bad deeds, do not fret over them. Do not compare. Do not complain to the Lord. Say, oh, Lord, I am your devotee. I love you. 
I pray to you every day. I go to the church every Sunday. But look what have you done for me. You have not given me anything. But the neighbor who are so wicked and who do the wrong deed so many times, and you let him prosper. You see? So King David told us, do not fret over this situation. Just wait for the Lord. Because remember in some other part of the Bible, yeah, it is stated that do not put your treasure, you know, on earth where moth can corrupt and destroy, but focus on the treasure in heaven, yeah, where it will be lasting forever. That is the thing. You see, most people thinking that if the Lord is loving and kind, then you must give him money, <laughs> give him a big house, give him, oh, at least big meditation hall, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here you don't have a big meditation hall. I am also sorry for you, but it's the way it is, so we have it, huh? Better than nothing, huh? Hmm. It will never be big enough in any case, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we are very happy to sit together in such a small room, yeah? Better than big room and nobody. <laughs> yeah. Many cases, you know, sometimes big temple, big churches, but nobody there. But it's okay, we're happy here. Yeah? I truly am happy, yeah? I don't really wish for anything, but I thought it's a pity, you know? And some big, big space and nobody there. If we have that, it would be good for you. Nah? Mm -hmm. Have more and more space, you know. Everybody can sit in one square meters. <laughs> one square kilometers instead of, <laughs> instead of just a few centimeters the way you sit. But you know what? This is a very good point here. Hmm? The way you meditate is the tighter the better. So, <laughs> At least when the Lord <laughs> looked down from heaven, he thought, wow, they're sitting very straight. <laughs> Appearance, yeah. Well, at least, you know, like this, you don't fall, you know, and you keep yourself straight, you know. In Zen Buddhism, if you sit straight all the time, that means you're a fantastic... <laughs> Uh, practitioner, you know? So oh, there's a good point, yeah? In every situation. So congratulations. <laughs> you are in the right place. <laughs> and your house is also bigger, so it's all right to be sitting tight sometimes, no? Nah? Mm. That's why sometimes people tell you, sit tight, right? And here you sit tight, no? <laughs> so what else? Did King David tell us here? He said, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Oh, did you inherit any land? <laughs> Sitting so far like that, so long? Yes, you did. You have a meditation hall here. <laughs> Very special. <laughs> you don't ever find such a meditation hall anywhere else, I think, because everywhere else have bigger temple, huh? bigger land and bigger hall, everything. So you <laughs> inherit some land here, no? <laughs> it's small, but this is your land, huh? It's your house. Actually, he doesn't mean the land materially, right? He means what? Heaven. Huh? Heaven. Yeah, heaven. The promised land. The promised land is not some square meter somewhere, you know, here, but the promised land is in heaven, yes? Yeah. Like Jesus said that my kingdom is not on earth. My kingdom is where? In heaven, because his disciple wanted him to be the king of the Jews, remember? He said, my kingdom is not here. <laughs> he couldn't care less to be king or 
not king or beggar or anything. How does he care, right? Nobody cares. When he's so enlightened like that, he would not care about any kingdom. Like even uh, Sekamoni Buddha, when he wants to find the truth, he even forsake his kingdom, right? Yes. Let alone to want to come <laughs> to, to get another kingdom after enlightenment, that's impossible. No enlightened master ever desire kingdom. Unless it is for some purpose that he has to do it, yeah? Or she has to do it for the sake of others, yeah? Or it is in the destiny that the master has to do that, yeah? Then they do that, yeah? Remember King Rama? Rama story, yeah? Okay. He was supposed to be the king. He was the crown prince. But then what happened? Because of uh, some bad gossip, some bad uh, talk, from jealousy and envy, so his father exiled him to another country, very, very far away. And he was happily gone. Yeah? He did not care for the kingdom. Yes. If he was to inherit the kingdom and became the king, then okay. He accepted and did his duty. But if uh, the kingdom was taken away from him, he's happy and no responsibility. So he was happy and gone. And then later on, when his name is clear <laughs> and he could come back, become the king again, then he was okay with it. You understand me? Either way, there's no aversion like... I like this, I don't like that. Maybe we don't like it, but we still do it. Yeah? We don't like thin, we don't like this, we don't like that. We all have our like and dislike because we are still in this uh, human domain and something we like, something we don't. But like or not like, we still continue to do whatever we have to do, right? For, for the sake of others or just to fulfill the destiny. Yeah? Okay. Now, let's continue. Hmm? So King David still always tells us that we should not fret over any situation in this world, yeah? And should just accept it, yes. But that doesn't mean we do not check ourselves, yeah? Everywhere we go, we should be a disciplined person and we should bring joy and happiness, yeah? In an orderly manner to everybody else and not to cause trouble not to be a burden for others wherever we go. Yes, now continue down there. Yet a little while longer, then the wicked will be no more. Yes. Though, though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. There must be someone who came to King David and complained about their unfortunate situation, <laughs> or that the enemy overcome them and the one who did the wicked deed is prospering, and the one who is doing you know, good deeds and be virtuous and good are not having any reward, perhaps like that. So King David exhort to them, saying, be patient, yeah? After a while, the wicked will be no more, okay? Sometimes it seems that little while is too long, right? And we get impatient. No? Any of you know that? Any of you know this situation? That you waited and you feel it's too long? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But he said, the meek shall inherit the land. Who is the meek? Why the meek shall inherit the land? The meek we mean the weak, you know, the weak, the humble. Here King David told us that wait a little while and then the enemies will be no more. You know, the, the wicked one, you know, the one who caused trouble for you, prosecute you, making trouble for you, they will be no more. Wait a little while. Sometimes a little while takes so long, but still must wait. Yeah. And you will be rewarded. That's what he said. 
Okay, sometimes we wait and seem like forever. Sometimes we could even wait the whole lifetime. But why not? This life is not very that important and is ephemeral and is illusion anyway. So even if we wait the whole life, we shall wait. We have eternity, yeah? So we should never try to return the wickedness to the wickedness, yeah? If people do wickedness to us, we should not return the same to them, yeah? Anyway, he said the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. Okay. The land, we know already, is maybe heaven, yeah? Yes. It could be also the land that we have here, meaning property, yeah? Meaning something that we want, yes. And he said that, be patient. If you are righteous, you will inherit it. You will have it, yes. And then you even live in abundance, okay? It might not always be in this lifetime, but sometimes it is in this lifetime, right? Sometimes we we see the reward very quick coming to us, yes. It's not always in monetary, uh, not always in prosperity, not always in, in material things, but we know there are many more rewards, many rewards better than material reward even, and we know all that, yeah? The practitioner of Guan Yin method, we know that. Except if you don't meditate well, except you do not be careful about the food that you eat, you know, that you make yourself impure by eating some food that is not proper, yeah? And with animal product or something with alcohol, thing like that. So always be careful, keep yourself pure. Nowadays it's difficult sometimes even, because sometimes you buy things outside, yeah? Sometimes they say vegetarian, but in some country they don't really list the ingredients and sometimes you don't know what is in there. So it is terrible sometimes, yeah? Even if you want to eat some ice cream, normally it seems very, very uh, harmless ice cream, but then you read, have egg in it. My God, who would ever put egg in ice cream? And what for? <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes ice cream have alcohol in it. And sometimes chocolate, you know, even have egg in it and have alcohol in it, something like that, or some animal fat. So it's very difficult to even choose something which looks very harmless to eat as vegetarian. So you have to be careful, okay? Mm. Of course, it's not like God punished us for eating some animal product, but it will contaminate Yes, our purity, it will interfere with the flow of our spiritual perception, yeah, from the divine. It will uh, put like a blot in the road, you know, in between us and our true self. That's the problem. So we have to always be careful. Rather eat uh, less, yeah? Rather eat uh, the thing that you're sure and not to eat more, but the thing you're unsure. All right, so continue. King David told us that the wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. It means your God, your Lord, your protector knows that even though the wicked people are doing uh, some bad things toward you, persecuting you, or, you know, pressurizing you in some way, or giving you terrible time. But the protector, the Lord, sees everything. He is not in a hurry to even punish them or anything, because he knows the law of cause and retribution will be just. And he sees that the wicked people are coming to an end, but they don't know that. <laughs> so they continue their wicked way and oppressing the meek, I mean the weak people, you know, the humble people. And they're oppressing them, oppressing them, and they just feeling that they are the winner and they're strong and they're powerful. 
but God knows that their days are numbered, that their destruction is coming. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to bring down the poor and the needy, to kill those who walk uprightly. But their swords shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Better is a little that the righteous person has than the abundance of many wicked people. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Yes. All this is to tell his near people that do not fear, be patient. Even the wicked people seem to be strong, and they have all kinds of weapons, and they are oppressing you, but the Lord will break all that. We destroy them for your sake, to protect you. But only if you trust in Him and let Him do it. Let God will be done. Just be patient and wait. Just meditate and think of the Lord. Everything else is not our business. <laughs> Except you make your living, yeah? To feed yourself and your family. Everything else, let God take care. And it will be done. No matter what situation, it will change. Many of you know that, or not? Yes. Yeah. In some places, some country, some situation, it feels like so hopeless. It feels like you will never get out of that situation, or you can never get out of your country even. But it changed. Yeah? A few months, a few weeks, sometimes a few years, it changed. Everything changed. No? You see the change or not? Everywhere we see the change. It's not fast enough for us. Of course, we are not patient, <laughs> as King David told us here. Sometimes we are not patient. I have to say sometimes things change too slow for me. Yeah, But I know there's nothing else we should do except wait and do our job. Our job is just to remember God and to meditate on God every day. Everything else will take care of themselves. <laughs> Jesus also told us that think not of the tomorrow. Huh? It's enough that you take care of everything today. Yes. And do not worry about your tomorrow. Because look at the lily in the field. Look at the grass. How God also would take care of them. And how wouldn't God take care of you? See, none of us can say such thing <laughs> confidently. Huh? Can you? Yeah. Do you have such faith like the Lord Jesus? Possible? Yes? Yes? yes. yes. Possible. Really? <laughs> you have? Wow, congrats. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Mm. Wonderful, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, when you sit here in front of me and listening to nice story from the Bible and good advice and in a good company and have good food and looking at a good dog, <laughs> it's very easy to say, yeah, I have faith like Jesus. Oh, wait, you know, because we are not crucified like the Lord and we don't go through so much tests. Most of the time, is the master who took upon himself, like Jesus Christ, or other guru, yeah, even Prophet Muhammad, even Buddha, even the Sikh gurus, even, you know, all the masters, they took upon themselves all the trouble, all the burdens. That's why you don't have any burden. You always feel safe, happy, and you don't understand much of the suffering of the master, right? Yes. None of the Disciples of Master Jesus even understood him that much. Some even deny him, yeah? Etc., etc. Some even doubt him. What we are learning, huh? You are learning, no? <laughs> Good. Learning to have faith like Jesus does. You know what? But uh, heaven doesn't expect much from us. Remember what Jesus said. If you just have the faith as small as the mustard seed. 
everything is possible. You see? Yes. Therefore, so little faith that <laughs> you have, and God still have mercy on you and help you every day, huh? And give you a lot of miracles and, you know, fulfilling your wishes every day. Yes. Ah, well, at least you are grateful, no? Are you? Yes. Okay. So God also knows that we are weak. We are tempted in this world and we are very, very oppressed from all sides. Yes. By all kind of trouble, all kind of burdens that weigh down on us. Sometimes very difficult just to have a happy day, huh? But of course, you know, after initiation, our life is better already, yes? Better already. But it's not as perfect as we want, huh? Yes. Because we still have the give and take in this world to take care. We still also have the collective bad karma of the planet that weigh down on us as well. And we also have this human heart which sympathize others. Yes, which feel compassion and love for others. And because of that connection, we also suffer a little bit, like our neighbors, like the one that we sympathize with, okay? My God, we are nowhere yet. <laughs> <laughs> I could just read, of course. Today I explain a lot. Probably did not need to explain. It probably was very clear, so never mind. We could explain or not explain, yeah? We explain <laughs> just for fun. Otherwise, it's very clear, yeah? The Bible is very clear already. The sentences are very clear. King David seems to be a very uh, common sense person, yeah? Whatever he said, it makes sense. And it's not difficult to understand, yeah? He talks to the commoners. Everybody can understand this. There's no need to explain even. But the wicked perish, he promised. And the enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish. Like smoke, they vanish away. Yes. Anyone who goes against you know, the devotees of God, yes, the true devotee of God, like you are, like his disciple, maybe, he said. Like the way you are, whoever go against you means against God. He means that. And whoever go against God is his enemy. The enemy of God will vanish, will disappear. So it's very easy. He was trying to encourage and remind his people to have faith in the Lord and not having fear over the enemies and just be patient. In a while, everything will change in the opposite direction. Like the enemies will vanish, will perish, but the devotee of the Lord will prosper. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's what it is, anyway. <laughs> he keep telling them that, uh, don't worry, yeah? Whatever enemy of yours, the Lord will take care. The Lord will make them perish, and you will be prospering. You will be surviving. You will be glorified. You will be in abundance. That's what it is. It's very positive psalm. Yes. We have another um, half. <laughs> Maybe another day. Okay? Yeah. I'll see you another day. All right? Welcome.